everybody, Fiona Poultridge here with you again and I've got another little piece of art to share with you using the darkroom door stamps this time. So last time remember I used the polka dot stencil and I created this background in my journal and this time around I'm going to create a page using the border stamp. This border stamp is seashells, it's one of the new ones. They are almost um, 12 inches long, which is a great size, and they're about two and a half inches wide. And I'm going to stamp it into some modeling paste. So I've got my spatula, I've got my modeling paste. I'm just gonna create an area here where I think the stamp is going to go. Now you could use a heavy gesso for this as well if you wanted to. Heavy gesso does dry a lot quicker than the modeling paste. This actually took quite a long time to dry. I left it for a little while to dry naturally and then I attacked it with the heat gun. What you wanna do here is you wanna still create some depth and texture when you stamp. So you wanna make it deep enough or thick enough so that when you stamp into it, you still get a raised effect, but you don't want it so thick that you can't actually stamp through it. Does that make sense? So I'm smooshing around here, giving it a good depth of layer. And when you use the gesso or the modeling paste, you need to make sure that one, it's dry. So here I go checking it with my finger. I think it's still a little bit too wet. Yep, too wet. You need to make sure it's dry on the surface, but still a little bit wet underneath so that it actually compresses. So this is where a heat tool is really good because it just dries the top layer but still leaves the inside of the thick layer um, a little bit moistery. You don't want it too wet because when you stamp on it, of course, all you do is you just pick up your modeling paste or your gesso straight back off again onto your stamp. Now I've checked it again and my fingers dry when I touch the top of the surface. So that means it's ready to go. Now you could stamp directly onto it without inking and that would give you still a nice raised effect, but I actually wanna see the outline of this stamp because the details in it are amazing. I'm using the Ranger Archival ink in the jet black because I know that when I put my dilution sprays over the top, which is what I'm gonna use because they're water-based, that it's not going to run everywhere. Give it a really good coat. It's a new stamp, so I need to sort of season it a little bit. Tap, 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 tap. I also stamped it on my blank paper underneath to make sure I had it up the way I wanted it. This stamp doesn't really matter which way up it goes, but I did have a, an idea in mind where I wanted everything. And I did my first stamp. Now you can see that some of the modeling paste is still a little bit wet and it has picked up on the stamp. Really good tip is to make sure that you clean that off really, really well because when it dries, it will dry like cement and it will ruin your stamp. So I just get the baby wipe out and I just make sure that I get into that little groove, all those little tiny grooves and get that modeling paste slash gesso out before I go ahead and do some more stamping. Now, if you wanted to, you could take it to the sink and you could give it a good wash with some warm soapy water. Um, these stamps are great for that. They're really, really robust. They're very, very high quality. So now I'm going to ink it up a little bit more and I'm going to add to my stamped collection I've got along the bottom here. I'm trying to create a bit of a, a seashell on the bottom of the ocean effect. And uh, yeah, a little bit more modeling paste is picked up. So again, I'll wipe it off. But I'm finding it's less and less as I go along because most of my modeling paste is now quite dry. I'm not aiming for a sharp, clear picture while I'm doing this. That comes a little bit later when I do my stamping onto my white cardstock. I'm just trying to create sort of a background. I'm making sure that I clear the edges off my stamp because you can see over on the right hand side when I push down, because you've got to push quite hard to get through the modeling paste. I've actually created a little border around the outside of my stamp. I'm not a very good stamper. But that's okay, we'll just cover that up with some more stamping. So here we go, add some more shells. I'm picking out some of the highlights of the shell stamp that I quite like. I'm just inking those areas. And then because these stamps are such a good quality, I can roll it over and give it a good uh, halfway stamp. I don't have to use the stamp acrylic block. When I want a really clean, crisp, um, perfect stamp impression that's when I use my acrylic block but in the background I'll often just roll my stamp over like you can see me doing here and I'm just going to push down areas of the stamp that I'd like to make an impression on the background it's a really cool way to create a background 
Right, oh, I'm pretty satisfied with what I've got there. Now I'm just going to hit it very quickly with my heat gun because the archival ink does need to dry before I hit it with anything too wet or else it is going to run a little bit. But once you dry it, that's it. It's set. I've also got a second stamp set here that Rachel sent me from Darkroom Door. It's really, really cool. It's got some awesome background images on it. And I'm going to do some stamping with some Dilution sprays. <laughs> I sound really hesitant, but I am actually going to use Dilution sprays. So these are from Ranger, um, and they are very highly pigmented, and they transfer really, really well. I use, um, I don't spray it on, I'm going to use a paintbrush, there you go, there's my little paintbrush, to actually paint some ink onto the stamped images. You can um, spray some of the ink onto a messy mat or a plastic bag or something like that and then just use that as an ink pad. But for some unknown reason, I decided to make it really fiddly and difficult. That's what I do. So there we go. There's the first stamped impression. It works really well. You don't get as crisp a um, impression as what you would if you did use an ink pad, but I just love the colors in this range and they are going to bring this journal page to life. I chose these three little, this trio of circles, I don't know what to call it, these three little circles um, as the first option and I'm just going to do some really beautiful pink stamping across the top of the page. It's sort of like, it's like seaweed or coral or you know something in the ocean that's got lots of pretty colours and um, when I did do my stamping I chose all of the stamps that have that sort of round feature to match the polka dot stencil that I'd already put in the background. I'm just going to vary up the colours, so I'm going to add some yellows and I'll add some turquoises and all those beautiful colours that are so bright in the range. Um, I'll go back to that later because I got kind of a bit sidetracked and decided that I wanted to do some painting of my little shells. They've dried completely now and the colour, adding the colour just brings them to the foreground. They become a really huge feature on the page. I'm, I'm going to do some stamping on some cardstock a little bit later on and add some more over the top so I can add some depth to the page. But I'm having so much fun colouring these in. Seriously, it's I, I'm not a colouring in person, but I'm definitely a painting in person. I could do this for hours. It, I never get bored. Um, I do forget to change my colour up occasionally. I'm adding a little bit of water because the dilutions being water-based move around the page so nicely with water. They just, they just swim around like some really strong pigmented watercolours. You could use watercolours for this if you've got some. I just happen to have my dilutions out and I'm adding a few little sprinkles, sparkles, splatters, those little things with my paintbrush and then I go and pick up my next colour. Now I don't know that you can quite see it at the top of the frame here but whenever I do take the lid off of these um, spray bottles I always make sure that I replace them immediately after. I have been caught too many times where I've gone oh I'll need that colour again I'll just leave the lid off and I've ended up spilling it. Oh see I almost did it then did you see that almost knocked the blue over. So I have to be very, very careful. I'm a bit clumsy. I don't know, you know, it's just the way I work. Um, fiddly and clumsy, two things that don't really go well together. And so while I'm doing my bit more of my top stamping here, I have to be very careful that I don't knock those bottles over. So I will put the lid on as soon as I'm finished with that colour or else I can guarantee I will have dilution ink everywhere. Anybody who's spilt their dilutions ink anywhere will know, there I go, putting the lid on, they will know how much of a mess that can make. I mean it's good fun but it also is a bit messy. So now I'm just continuing with some of the stamping across the top. Obviously I decided I should probably get back on track. I'll go back down to the bottom area again and do some more painting in. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to cut through all this stuff because this is boring. You don't want to watch me stamping constantly. Um, pretty much what I do is I just go through every colour of the rainbow I can possibly think of. Um, stamping at the top and then every colour I can possibly think of down the bottom. So here we go about an hour later. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was good fun I got lost in it. I'm just adding the last little bits of colour here you can see that I've extended the colour up into the ocean we're going to call it an ocean now because it's starting to look a little bit like a seabed so we've, um, we've got all that colour added and now we're ready to do the next layer. 
So I'd mentioned earlier that I did some stamping on some cardstock. Here's my stamping for my cardstock. And then I fussy cut out sections of the stamp. I think I stamped it about three times so I could get some really good areas and fussy cut around them. And I've just popped a little bit of glue on the back or double-sided tape, whatever, you know, tickles your fancy, whatever works. Um, if the background's wet, I often use glue, but if the background has dried, then I'm quite happy to use some double-sided tape. Here I am procrastinating over where I'm gonna put this little piece. The problem I have with layering, and I think everybody has it, is that I don't like to cover up what I've already done. But, I mean, in the scheme of things, the, the bonus is, is that the layers is really what makes it in the end. So this one I decided to make it a little bit smaller, and then I can add a little piece over here, and I was quite satisfied I hadn't, no, I wasn't satisfied, I lied. There, now I'm satisfied. I was quite satisfied that I hadn't covered up too much of my background. Now, I'm going to use my Dana Wakely Media Scribble Sticks to colour in these gorgeous little shells that I've stamped. And remember I said I used my stamp block this time, so I got a really nice, sharp impression. So the ones underneath are kind of a bit motley and not so, not so precise, but the ones on top are the ones that really, really show off the stamp. And I'm using these little scribbly sticks to colour them in. Now the scribble sticks are water reactive, but I choose not to actually activate them. I quite like the fact that it's got that scratchy crayon look to the top of it. So I, I, you could you could add some water to them and you could help them blend those colors through the same as what you've done with the background. Um, but the paper that I used to stamp on is just cardstock. So if I do add too much water to that, it does tend to fall apart, it breaks. It's not watercolor paper. In hindsight, I could have stamped on some watercolor paper and then I would have been able to activate my scribble sticks and the paper underneath would have been just fine. But nah, in hindsight, maybe next time but I quite like the scratchy look that the scribble sticks have given it. So for me, a journal page is never a journal page finished until I've done some scribbles on it. And what I've got is a, oh, I think it's a 4B. I reckon it'd be a 4B graphite pencil. And I'm just giving it a loose grip, which means that I'm holding the end of it um, rather than holding it like I'm trying to write. That gives you a bit less control when you use your um, pencil in your journal. And I'm just creating some little hangy, seaweedy kind of looks here. Just making some wiggly little lines, going around the circles, and adding that little extra layer of texture. I thought I recorded me writing the title on, but apparently I didn't. But anyway, it's just me writing. I wrote Dream Higher Than The Sky, and deeper than the ocean. I thought that was a really appropriate quote for my page. Thank you very much, Rachel, again, for inviting me as a guest designer. I just love these darkroom door stamps and stencils. They've been amazing and so much fun to play with. Thank you all for having me. And uh, yeah, have some fun at Darkroom Door, www.darkroomdoor.com. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>